Hey church, today we are in 2 Samuel chapter 2, and this is the beginning of the process of the, the kingdom of Israel transferring from Saul's house to David's house. And uh, in verse 1 it says, Then it came about afterwards that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. So David said, Where shall I go up? And the Lord said, To Hebron. You know, it's interesting here at the beginning, if you remember back in 1 Samuel in chapter 15, verse 28, uh, the Lord says to Samuel, um, or, or I'm sorry, Samuel says to uh, Saul that the Lord has ripped the kingdom from your house and he has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. Then in 1 Samuel 16, Samuel goes up and actually anoints David when he's 15 years old that he is going to become the next king of Israel. And now here we are 15 full years later when that promise is just now beginning to be realized. And you think about David over those 15 years and all the things that he's been through and all the, the trauma. And, and on that first day when he was anointed king by Samuel, thinking kind of, I'm going to be king over Israel. This is, this is incredible. Till how much further along we are that things could not have possibly played out probably any different than David had imagined them. And so here he is 15 years later and finally going to be installed as the king and first of Judah, which is his tribe. So he he goes to Judah, but before he even goes up, he inquires of the Lord. And it stands out to me that the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, that, that David's desire was to be obedient to God and to follow him. And so he inquires and he prays to God. And he says, God, is now the time for me to return to Judah? And the Lord says, go. And he says, then where should I go? And the Lord said, to Hebron, to the city of, of Hebron. Now, Judah was the tribe that, that um, Jesse was from, uh, David's father, and it was a tribe that Jesus is ultimately going to be from that um, is as a descendant of David. And so he goes up to Judah. And um, in verse 4, it says, And the men of Judah came, and there anointed David king over the house of Judah. Now, we have to remember about Israel. Is that Israel is actually a confederation of 12 different tribes. So it's a nation, but it's 12 tribes that make up that nation, the 12 um, sons of, of, um, of Jacob. And each one of these sons had their own tribe. And so each one of these tribes had their own land and their kind of their own identity and all that kind of stuff. So um, David is made the king over Judah, but he's not the king over the 11 other tribes yet. Um, real quick, before we get there, though, I do want to point in verse 2. Verse 1 is David inquiring of the Lord, his faithfulness and asking God, God, what should I do? But then in verse 2, we find out just another one of the many indicators of this one sin that is going to really haunt and plague David throughout his life. It says, so David went up there and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelite and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. David's sin was multiplying wives. In fact, it's going to get him all kinds of trouble. By the end of this book, as we're studying, we're going to see the devastation that he's going to bring to David and to his kingdom by multiplying his wives. David goes up, he becomes king over Judah. But um, the, the rest of the tribes, the natural progression after Saul's death would be that his son would become king. Now, now what you have to know in this, uh, we're going we're gonna to get a picture of this guy, Abner. Now, Abner was the, the cousin of Saul, and he kind of is, is the one who's in charge now of Israel. It says in verse 8, But Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over Madnahim. And he made him king over Gilead and over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and even over all of Israel. And so now David is king in, um, in Judah, and um, Ishbosheth is going to be a king over all the other tribes. And it's going to last for about seven and a half years that David is reigning as king in Judah, but not the other tribes in Israel. And Ishbosheth is king over them. So it's a divided kingdom. Now, uh, at the end of, uh, throughout 2 Samuel, we're going to begin to see that when, when David's grandson Rehoboam takes over, we're going to get that split, um, the northern ten tribes and the southern two tribes. Um, and and that, that split hasn't happened yet, but we can already see the beginnings of the tribalism beginning to fracture through Israel. Okay, um, so the, the process of now this divided kingdom is these kingdoms are at war with each other. And uh, the rest of this chapter really lays out um, one of the really significant battles that happened. It says in verse 16, or it says in, um, it says in verse 14, then Abner said to Joab, Joab is the, the commander over David's army. Abner is the commander over um, Ishbosheth's army. It says, now let the young men arise and hold a contest before us. And Joab said, let them arise. And so they arose and went over by count, 12 for Benjamin and Ishbosheth, 
the son of Saul, and twelve for the servants of David. Each one of them seized his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side, so they fell down together. Therefore that place was called Helkath Hazarim, which is in Gibeon. That day the battle was so severe, and Abner and his men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. What happened, they had twelve guys from each tribe, and they said, let's let them fight each other, and we'll see who's going to get the victory. Those 12 guys fought so valiantly and so desperately, they actually ended up killing each other and maiming each other, and it, it became unclear who the winner was at the end of that, um, those 12 rounds of, of battles, and so they began to fight against each other. And um, David's men began to overtake Abner's men. In fact, God is, this is the, the process of God giving David a great victory, and he's going to continue to show his favor to David and, and to will. In, in the end of the next couple chapters, you're going to see that David is going to become the undisputed king over all of Israel. And this is really the beginning of, this battle is the beginning of that tide turning. Um, but Abner and his men begin to um, retreat. And something just really kind of uh, that, that sticks out there, that as they're retreating, um, it says in um, verse 18, now the three sons of Zariah were there, Joab and Abishai and Asahel. And Asahel was a swift-footed as one of the gazelles, which is in the field. And Asahel begins to chase after Abner and his men. And um, Abner sees him chasing him, and he says, he tries to make a deal with Asahel. He says, hey, why don't you take this spoil of war, and you can have that and go off. But Asahel really wanted to battle with, um, with Abner, and it says uh, in verse 23, however, he refused to turn aside. Therefore, Abner struck him in the belly with the butt end of the spear, so the spear came out his back, and he fell there and died on the spot. And it came about that all who came to that place where Asahel had fallen and died stood still. This is really um, a, a great defeat for David's army, for um, Abner to be able to kill him. But really, um, a personally, this is Joab's brother. And this is going to come up in, in chapter 3 tomorrow when we read that Joab takes this very personal. And, and this back and forth between these two armies is really going to bring a lot of pain and a lot of destruction to Israel, not just in these next few days and weeks, but really in the years and years to come after this, this battle and this um, brokenness, this fracturedness is going to begin to, to cause problems. But like we said, it was a great victory in verse 30. It says, Then Joab returned from following Abner when he gathered all the people together. Nineteen of David's servants beside Asahel were missing. So, nine, so 20 was the total number of casualties to, to David's army. But the servants of David had struck down many of Benjamin and Abner's men so that 360 men had died. So the victory for David was, was so thorough that it was 20 to 360. And this is just, again, God's favor being on David and, and on him being chosen to be the next leader of Israel. And part of it is just, you know, you can expect that when God has called you to a certain space, he's going to give you favor and, and he's going to give you victory. Even when the odds seem long and they seem difficult or they seem difficult or challenging to, to fight those battles, God is going to give you the victory. Church, God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.